We look over to the Mariners and the sort of unfortunate sort of things continue here as we look to the end of one of the final homestands of the year and the beginning of the last road trip of the year for the ball club. So the Mariners played two games against the Padres on the September, the 13th and 14th of September. That first game, a two to nothing loss, unfortunately. So with shutouts, no players of the game there. San Diego's a good ball club. You Darvish just had a great game, pitched eight innings. Probably could have pitched a complete game if we're being totally honest. And the Seattle hitters were really just unable to solve it. Um, and even the Padres, I mean, there was good pitching on the other side of it, but the no run support there uh, against Hugh Darvish by Seattle. Luckily, they were able to bounce back on the 14th in the day game on Hispanic Heritage Day with a 6-1 to win. Player of the game number one, starting pitcher Luis Castillo. Castillo goes six innings, only allowing four hits, not giving up a run. Uh, one walk on the day and nine strikeouts. That one walk shouldn't have even been a walk because it, uh, the pitch that was ball four was actually pretty well in the strike zone. Uh Player of the game number two, designated hitter Carlos Santana, the DH on the day, one hit, one run, three RBI. Santana hit a three-run bomb to give the Mariners even more of a lead against the Padres and split that awkward sort of two-game set there. That was San Diego, you know, despite the struggles, Fernando Tatis and all that's took it, taken place with him, is a good ball club. I mean, they've got – they're in the thick of the NL wildcard race – uh, they're not going to chase the Dodgers. They've already, yeah, the Dodgers have already clinched their division, uh, but they've got a lot of talent. Manny Machado, obviously Juan Soto. Now, you Darvish has been a solid pitcher for a decent amount of time, but this was pretty solid series to only to hang around in that game. Obviously, unfortunately, lose that game too. But this was a pretty solid series. Uh, we look to that game two as well. Julio Rodriguez joined the 25-25 club as the only rookie, first-year rookie, to do that. Uh, Chris Young of Arizona and Mike Trout of the Angels were both able to accomplish that feat, but only Julio did it in his debut season. Both the other two did it a year after uh, they had actually debuted. So that was really historic. I mean, he continues to set marks and just overall be a guy that is, is really special, really special to watch. And it's just incredible each game to see what he does, whether it's a new record or something else. If you don't know what 25-25 is, it's the uh, 25 home runs and 25 stolen bases. And you figure he's slowed down with the stolen bases, so that might take some time. But you figure it's the sooner rather than later that he might have a 30-30 season in just his rookie year. So that's something to keep an eye on. I don't know if that'll happen, uh, considering how much he's slowed down with the stolen bases, but it's certainly in play. Uh, also, I want to share, I know I mentioned when I started the talking about the September 14th game that it was Hispanic Heritage Day. There was a really cool moment pregame. Our photographer on the day, Brian Saldana, caught it, where players of both the Padres and the Mariners uh, brought out flags of their native countries uh, and posed for a photo. As you can see there, Brian got this great shot um, of both teams celebrating. That was a really cool moment to see captured there. Um, and just to celebrate that, just I believe it was a day before as well, Roberto Clemente Day. So that was special. I wanted to throw that in there before we continue on to the Angels series. So the Mariners finish up that homestand going 4-4 four and four in a tough set of games against the White Sox, the Braves, and then the Padres. Those are three good ball clubs. And they split it, uh, those eight games, and it even four and four. So they go on their last road trip of the regular season down to Anaheim first, and this it gets rocky. Uh, September 16th at the Angels, an eight to seven loss. Seattle goes down big early, uh, but was able to bring it with the within run uh, in the top of the ninth just unable to complete the comeback. 
Player of the game designated here, Carlos Santana. Santana, two hits, two runs, three RBIs, and one walk on the day. Uh, Santana would hit two homers, uh, and that second one was a solo homer to bring the Mariners within one uh, in the top of the ninth. Unfortunately, the rest of the team was not able to tie it up and give them a win. September 17th at the Angels, a 2-1 to one loss. So this one much closer, but again, uh, the inconsistency of the offense shows up there. The only homer coming by a Taylor Trammell solo home run, and he would be our player of the game. One hit, one run, one RBI as Trammell starts in center field, and we'll get to why he was starting in center field here in a second. And then the 18th, uh, normally this is where the series would end, but they're playing a fourth game on a Monday, which is this rarely happens. Um, the third game, September 18th, a 5-1 to one loss. This one just an embarrassing one despite Seattle jumping ahead early. Uh, Actually, they equalized early. Player of the game, second baseman Adam Frazier. Frazier, one hit, one RBI. He helps bring in the only run of the day for the Mariners. Uh, and the pitching just unable to really hold it in there. But it doesn't really matter as the offense doesn't give them much run support. So a struggle there. Uh, you lose the first three games of the road trip. They're winning right now on the bottom of the second against the Angels. Uh, the first run driven in by Ty France as J.P. Crawford singled. France would drive him home on a double. Uh, but it's a tough lineup. You've got guys like Kurt Casale's in, Abraham Toro's in, Dylan Moore is playing center field. And we'll get to that when we get to injury-related news. But it's been a tough slope. They've had a good amount of injuries, and they're trying to deal with that right now against divisional teams that surely aren't going to just lay down and give them these wins. Uh, we look to player of the week here. Uh, it's a tough slate because a lot of these guys are struggling, but Julio in his limited at bats has been able to do things and have a pretty impressive average in 11 plate appearances over the past seven days. Julio has four hits, four runs. Two of those hits are homers, two RBIs, 10 total bases, a walk, a stolen base, which would be his 26 on the season, a 364 batting average, a 462 on base percentage, a 909 slugging percentage to create a 1.37 OPS. Julio, to this day, leads the team in war, wins above replacement by a good amount with 5.7. The next closest Mariners player is Eugenio Suarez with a 4.6. So we'll get to that injury-related news now. Uh, on the 17th of September, Eugenio Suarez was placed on the 10-day injured list with a small fracture in his right index finger. Uh, Gino, in I believe it was game one against the Angels, uh, suffered an injury uh, on a sort of pop fly where it just he threw his bat, didn't look comfortable, tried to shake his hand off, and we'd find out that he had a small fracture in his right finger. From Gino himself, he said that he's feeling better and that it shouldn't be too long. That would be big, especially considering how much of an impact he's made uh, in the month of September here, going even back to August. He was our player. He was our star of the week last week on Seattle Star of the Week. Gino's been huge. And I'm, even I mentioned it with the Julio thing, Gino second uh, on the team in war and wins above replacement. So having him out is big. Also on the 17th, Julio Rodriguez is a late scratch from the lineup due to lower back tightness. On the 18th, Julio is out of the lineup again, taking the day off as a precaution. Today on the 19th, he's not pitch. He it was announced that he did some light uh, swinging yesterday, and the team hopes to have him back against Oakland. But obviously, you don't want to mess with any injury to him. So Dino's out. Julio's out. Cal Raleigh has been dealing with something. Uh, I believe it was his hand that he's dealing with lately, and he's only expected to go today in an emergency situation. Uh, Dylan Moore's back, fortunately. Uh, let's see, Ty France supposedly has a wrist thing still dealing with, so you think about that. That's a lot of your offensive contributors. You get Mitch back. Mitch Hanniger, uh had been out of the lineup dealing with something, but you think about those names. Suarez, Rodriguez, Hanager, Raleigh, those are some pretty big offensive contributors, and the team has been without them as of late. So you're really hoping uh, that the team is going to be able to maneuver around that and deal with that because and this is the home stretch. I mean, uh, things are getting really serious here. 
the soonest as of right now, I know that it'll depend on what happens in this game against the Angels, but the soonest I believe that this team can clinch a playoff berth is uh, – Sunday, the 2nd of October, when they're back on their final homestand of the year. So things are getting serious, um, and you need these guys to get healed up pretty quickly. And I think uh, you hope that you can get these guys healed up over the course of this road trip. So we look at other sort of team-related news. On the 16th of September, uh, the Mariners would announce their Fall League participants. If you're not aware, Fall League is sort of when players can continue their development and just continue to get better uh, with after their minor league seasons have ended. Uh, left-handed pitcher Adam Mako, outfielder Alberto Rodriguez, right-handed pitcher Brian Wu, who is pictured there on your screen, uh, first baseman Robert Perez Jr., right-handed pitcher Ty Adcock, left-handed pitcher Jorge Benitez, infielder Jose Caballero, uh, outfielder, outfielder Spencer Packard, and right-handed pitcher Juan Sen will all be participating in the Fall League uh, from our Seattle Mariners organization. On the 17th, infielder Dylan Moore returned from his rehab assignment in AAA Tacoma and was reinstated from the 10-day IL. So it's big to get Dylan Moore back. He played a good game in center field last night. And you're going to need your guys healthy regardless as we get down to the home stretch. So that's all we've got for team-related news. Uh, for league-related news, on the 13th, it would be announced that Rawlings, who makes a lot of uh, gloves in Major League Baseball and just in general, announced that they will unveil a utility gold glove award moving forward. There are the nine gold glove awards uh, given out per league, including pitcher, uh, but there will now be a utility award going forward. The award will be given in both the American League and National League. Uh, there's no uh, requirements announced officially yet, but if we're looking at anything like that, uh, I know some Mariners fans will know a certain player who would fit into that category. Sam Haggerty does currently lead, lead utility players in defensive runs saved. I believe it's with six. So could see some hardware there, but uh, we'll have to wait to see some official requirements and announcements about that. They just made that announcement on the 13th, and that's pretty exciting to see considering how important utility players can be just around baseball as a whole. On the 14th, uh, two St. Car St. Louis Cardinals legends set a record. Pitcher Adam Wainwright and catcher Yadier Molina set the most regular season starts as a battery, batteries pitcher and a catcher, uh, with 325. So congratulations to those two. Uh, it's not technically league news, uh, I guess, but also sticking with the Cardinals and some legends, uh, legendary uh, ball player. Uh, Albert Pujols, uh, nicknamed The Machine, has 698 career home runs. He's two away from hitting the mark of 700, which is a big deal. So I'll be keeping an eye on that. That'll be pretty cool and pretty special. Albert's been a great guy to fans throughout his career. So that would be pretty exciting to see. Ooh, J.P. Crawford just hit a triple. He's two for two today. Very nice. Um, and then on the 15th, I know that we, a little bit ago, we mentioned Hispanic Heritage Day uh, with, for the Mariners. On the 15th, the Rays made history with an all-Latino lineup. All nine players in the batting order were Latino for Tampa Bay. That's the first time in Major League Baseball history. So that was a pretty cool mark. And they won the game pretty convincingly that they played in. So we look for our Mariners now looking ahead. They sit in an 80-win, 65-loss record. They are second in the American League West. That probably won't change. Uh, third in the AL wild card right now. They're two games behind Toronto for first, one and a half games behind Tampa Bay for second. So you can see why these losing these games and these injuries is critical because, you know, if you make the playoffs and you break the drought, that's great regardless. But you'd like the first wild card so that you can host those games. Looking ahead, the Mariners play one game today, which is September 19th with a 107 start. They already began. That's why I'm telling you what's going on. And then three games they'll play down in Oakland uh, next September 20th through 22nd. The 20th game is a 640 start. The 21st game is also a 640 start. And the game on the 22nd is a 1237 p.m. first pitch. So three games down in Oakland, you'd hope that you get some guys back from injury or if they need to rest, you can do so. But you got to start winning these games against these bad divisional teams. So 